So how many of you are happy that winter has passed? Yay! I'm a summer person. How many summer people do we have in the house? How many winter people do we have? There's a few. You're allowed to be winter people. My son loves winter. And I know there's in every season there's special things, right? But it feels to me as if I come alive again in September, October. So I'm, I'm really happy that spring is here. I remember when we moved to East London 15 years ago, it was the very first time in my life I lived in an area with a summer rainfall. So maybe for you who are born and bred in East London, it's nothing new. But for me, I always associated rain with a cold. You know, like in the Western Cape, when, when it rains, then it's cold, you know. And I love rain, but I don't love the cold. So for me to, to come to East London to experience a summer rainfall was just like this whole new experience. And I know all of you have your favorite seasons, you know, and um, I think we have all, you know, we all tend to, to, to be drawn to a certain season in the natural. But I think in the same way that there's seasons in the natural, there's seasons in the spirit. Right? We go through seasons in our spiritual walk with the Lord. And sometimes, you know, even though you love winter in the natural, winter in the spirit, in the spiritual realm, it's, it's not always your favorite season because it sometimes feels as if you, you're cold and you get stuck and there's no new life. But regardless of in which season you are in, I don't know where you find yourself at the moment spiritually, even though we're in spring in the natural, you could potentially find yourself in a different season in the spirit. But regardless of where you are spiritually this morning, I have good news for you because I believe in God's climate, it's always raining. It's not like a winter rainfall or a summer rainfall. I believe there's always rain available regardless of the spiritual season we find ourselves in. And for me, that's very exciting because it means that even if I find myself in a winter season spiritually, I can still stand under God's reign. I can still receive life. I can still be life to somebody else, even if I don't feel, you know, as if I'm a se in a season of spring spiritually. And, you know, I think sometimes we, we don't experience God's reign in the spirit for many reasons. Sometimes we don't go to rainy places. This is not you guys because you are here this morning. I believe God is reigning every Sunday. You know, when we worship together, when we come together, it's currently raining on Thursday evenings. You know, when we come together, there's something so, so many beautiful places where it rains. And sometimes we're not there, so we don't experience the rain, but sometimes there's something else. And I want to illustrate to you this morning. Sometimes we come to rainy places, but we come like this. You know, we are covered by our own umbrella, and it can represent many different things. But we're standing in the rain, but we don't get wet. It doesn't touch us. You know, it, we, we actually keep ourselves covered and safe and comfortable with our big umbrella, even though we sit in church. And what happens, we can actually come and go, and the rain of God could potentially have no effect on our hearts. No effect. So we go to rainy places. It's raining but we are covered, and I feel prophetically, let's keep it open for a few more seconds, I feel prophetically that God is saying, let's close our umbrellas this morning, let's close it, let's close it, and I'm going to take you through a journey this morning, just showing you what potentially could be an umbrella in our lives, but I want to I wanna declare this morning, you know, if we want to receive the rain of God, if we want to get soaked if we want to get wet, if we want to get drenched in the spirit, in the rain, the, the one thing we must do is we must close our umbrellas. Amen. So are you ready to do that this morning? Close your umbrella because I really believe there's something beautiful when we stand in the rain. And I know nobody wants to get wet when it's raining, but this is East London. It's a summer rainfall. It's not the end of the world to get wet. I think this is the most amazing thing for me. You know, when, when I lived in the Western Cape, you really don't want to get wet when it rains. But in East London, it's not the end of the world. I mean, so even in the natural, we can get wet a little bit. And, you know, my desire this morning is to send you home with a new expectation, with, a, with an excitement to get up tomorrow morning. You know, a shift. I, I, I'm trusting God for a shift 
in our spiritual season today. Regardless of which season you are in, a shift from, from hopelessness to hope, from depression to life, from, you know, just a stirring. I'm trusting God to stir something this morning. I mean, so I want to I take you to a scripture in the book of Isaiah 10. So we, we're doing a prophetic month. So we're trusting the Lord to, to stir us as a church, to stir us prophetically. So most of the scriptures I'm using this morning is coming from the books in the Bible, the prophets in the Old Testament. We, I know many of us, we don't read those books because it's deep. You know, it's deep and it's difficult and it doesn't always make sense, but I'm going to show you a few scriptures this morning that is simple, it's, it's understandable, and it's going to stir something in your heart this morning. So Isaiah 10 verse 12, it says, break up your uncultivated ground, for it is time to seek and search diligently for the Lord and to long for His blessing until He comes to reign righteousness, and his gift of salvation on you. I want us to read this together. Can we do that? Right. So break up your uncultivated ground, for it is time to seek and search diligently for the Lord and to long for his blessing until he comes to reign righteousness and his gift of salvation on you. There's so much in this scripture, in this one scripture, but I'm gonna I'm gonna unpack it for you. We're gonna we're gonna look at it, we're gonna look at it again. And I wanna start with a part that says, it is time to seek and search diligently for the Lord. It is time to seek and search diligently. And we all know that, you know, there's there's so many scriptures in the word that says we need to seek the Lord, but we don't always know how to do that. And how do you seek the Lord? It says if we seek Him with a whole heart, we're going to find Him. And we kind of sometimes have an idea, but how do we practically seek the Lord? And this is where I want to start. I think first of all, if we want to seek God, we need to recognize our need for rain. I think in the natural, we're very aware of our need for rain, right? I mean, if, if there's a drought, if there's water restrictions, we feel it. We, we feel it. And we actually start praying, God, please send rain. You know, there's, I mean, many of you remember the, the drought, especially in the Western Cape a few years ago. It was, it was serious. You know, if it's not raining in the natural, we feel it. But I think sometimes in the spirit, if in, in our own life and in our own hearts, we, we prolong that prayer or that asking for rain because we, we don't, we, we feel the effect, but we do not always realize it's a lack of rain. It, it, something's missing or something is disconnecting, but we don't always realize that we need to ask for rain. So our starting point is we need to recognize our need for rain in the spirit. Like in the natural, like we need natural rain, we need spiritual rain. And secondly, we are not begging God for rain, right? We are asking by faith. We, we come to him. Uh, I'm going to show you a scripture now where it says we need to ask for rain, but we're not begging God for rain, which is, it's, it's, there's a very uh, important difference because the Spirit has been poured out, right? On the day of Pentecost, God has given us His Spirit. The, the, the Holy Spirit is with us. He is here with us. However, we need to ask. We need to push in for more, but we're not begging. You understand what I'm saying? So Zechariah 10 verse 1 says, Ask the Lord for rain, in the time of the latter rain. And I want you to notice something. It it doesn't just say, ask the Lord for rain. It says, ask him for rain in the time of the latter rain. Now, the latter rain was actually, um, uh, the time of the latter rain was springtime. And those those seasons, or the the rain that came in springtime, it came just before the harvest. You know, when when you read all the, the, the small print in, in the book of, of Zechariah explains very beautifully that there's autumn rain that came at planting time, and then there's spring rain that came at just before the harvest. So what I, what I want you to note is the rain of God, even though it rains in all seasons, I believe, there's different purposes in every season. So autumn rain comes in planting time which is very important because if, this, if we plant seed and there's no water, you know, there can't be growth. But then spring rain is 
as important because it, it comes just before the harvest. And I think sometimes we, we, we look at people and we, we recognize that they've received spring rain. But we are in a different season and we miss that our autumn rain is just as important as the spring rain. You know, that these seasons where God sends rain, and I, I just want you to note this because often we, 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 we see God's rain as everything is the same. And I think sometimes every, every time God rains down on us, there's a different purpose, especially for us as individuals. So what do we do after we have asked for rain? We ask him for, ta- for, for, for rain in the time of the latter rain, but what do we do after we have asked? I want to give you three very, very simple things that I think could help us to seek the Lord. First of all, we need to free up time. We need to free up time. I know we're busy. You know, I get it. For um, I started working with, with Andre full-time at the church about 14 years ago. And before that, I, I was in a job, very demanding job, lots of overtime, lots of pressure, and I really had to fight for my time with the Lord. I had to, I had to be creative around the time with God because I needed it, but it was not so easy to find it. And I, I know you guys are busy. I know you've got families, you've got jobs, you've got studies. There's things you need to do. But I think sometimes we look at being busy as bad, you know? I'm busy, so it means it's bad. It's not necessarily bad to be busy. I think God created us to be productive. I think, you know, whenever you speak to somebody who's maybe lost a job or, or has got a business and, the, and it's, it's drying up, the, the work is drying up, sometimes it's worse to be not busy than to be busy. I don't know if you've experienced that. So some, sometimes we think busy is bad. I don't think busy is bad. I think if we're busy with the wrong things, I think if we prioritize the unimportant, this is when busy becomes bad. And I want to I wanna encourage us this morning, you know, if we free up time for the Lord, practically, how are we going to do that in, a, in our busy lives? I believe we must, say, we must learn to say no to the unimportant so that we can say yes to the important. We, we literally need to, to learn to say no to the unimportant, and you need to figure it out. I cannot tell you what is unimportant, because for me, it might be something different, you know? It it might mean, unimportant for me might be important for you. So you need to figure it out, but we need to learn to say no to the unimportant so that we can say yes to the important, so that we can free up time so that we can seek the Lord, amen? So, I mean, if if I wanna spend time with my husband, he is, he's busy. You know, you don't want to know the number of WhatsApps and phone calls and emails he's dealing with on a daily basis. You would probably run away <laughs> from your phone. If, if I want to spend time with him, I can wait until it miraculously, spontaneously happen, you know, which it does sometimes. But if I want to have quality time with the important people in my life, I need to prioritize it. I need to be able, I need to say no to other things that I can say yes to the people I really want to spend time with. It's the same, it's the same with God, you know? We, we, we have to learn to, in, in our daily schedule, in our daily routine, monthly, weekly routine, to make time, to free up time for the Lord. Amen. You can do that. You can do that. You know, then we need to we need to free up time. Then we need to follow the clouds. We need to actually go to rainy places. If we want to seek the Lord, if we want to ask him for rain, we, we cannot sit, stay in the desert. We could, but, you know, it's up to us to move where the rain is. And, you know, at church, there's just so many opportunities. For, for, for us to be in the rain, you know, I'm, I'm so blessed by what God's doing on, on Thursday evenings. I couldn't make this past Thursday evening, but I've heard so many testimonies. I've been to the previous one, and I was so blessed. So sometimes it's just this, these things that God is, is raining on, and I want to encourage you, even if you go once a month, join us on, on, our, on our Thursday night where we just seek God. There's something happening there. 
You know, Sundays, God's reigning every Sunday. He's reigning in our, in our small groups during the week, in our live groups. He's reigning at our encounters. You know, and I know we, we do encounters, encounter one, two, three, four, and maybe you've done it. Maybe you've done it. You've ticked your box. But if you find yourself spiritually in a desert season, in a season of drought, in a season of winter, what about signing up again? What about giving it another try or just positioning yourself in the rain again? Or what if, what if, what if the next step to receiving more rain from the Lord is to facilitate? You know, I think in, in my life, I can really testify when, when I started facilitating, when I started praying for other people, when I started stepping out of the boat. So I wasn't only standing in the rain, I was like pulling people with me, you know. I was, I was, I was, uh, just getting people to join me and, and praying for them, it is when I received even more from the Lord. When we get out of the boat, when we get take off our umbrella, and we, when we get moving. So I want to encourage you, free up time, follow the cloud. Do whatever, whatever you need to do to, to, to stand in the, in the rain. And then something I also want to encourage you to do is find a fresh way. So we free up time, we follow the cloud, and then we find a fresh way, a, a fresh worship song. I mean, I think we, we're so spoiled because there's so, many, there's so many good songs out there, so many anointed people that God is using. Praise God for, you know, for every worship leader out there. Praise God for our worship team. Praise God for moments of worship. But we need to expose ourselves. This is what the Bible says, sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing a new song. Expose yourself to some fresh worship music. It, it does something to us. And something I started doing recently, just in terms of my, my own Bible study, you know, a few months ago, I said to the Lord, I feel stuck in my Bible reading. I feel demotivated. I feel, I just, I need fresh inspiration because I read there and I read there. And then... The Holy Spirit took me to, I mean, I've been exposed to the Bible Project before, but I've never done what I'm doing now. So the Bible Project is little short video clips on different topics of the Bible, but also they make videos of every book of the Bible. So it's like a little animated story. So you can go to, this is, this is a picture of the book of Acts. So if you go into YouTube, you can go to the their website as well, but easiest, you go into YouTube, you type in the Bible Project, Acts, or any book of the Bible, Galatians, Philippians, then it kicks out a little video clip, about seven, eight minutes long, so it's not too long, and it takes you through this animated version of this book of the Bible, the history, all the important things in, in this book that you would find, and it brings it alive. It's eight, seven, eight minutes. It's quick. But it gives you a taste of what is in this book. So what I do now, I started with the letters of the Apostle Paul. So I watch the video clip. Then I read through the book. Then I go back to the video clip, watch it again. And then I see things I haven't seen before. You know, what's so amazing, they connected, say, for example, the Apostle Paul and his letters. And they connected to the book of Acts. We, they would say, okay, in the book of, uh, or in chapter 16, the book of Acts, he was visiting the church in, um, in Ephesus. So this is the book of Ephesians. It's actually, he's writing for that church that he visited in that season. It's bringing it alive. <laughs> so now I can't wait for my time when I, when I do my Bible reading because I found a fresh way. And Maybe for you, it's something else. And maybe six months from now, I need something fresh again, right? But we need to find a fresh way to seek the Lord. If, if whatever you're doing is not working at the moment, find a fresh way. I literally just say to God, Lord, I need, a, I need a fresh way. And he helped me to, you know, to go to, to the Bible project. And I was, like I said, I've been exposed to it before and I never, I've never done this. Find a fresh way. There's, there's so many, we are, we are so privileged. I mean, you go onto, onto your version, you go to a scripture, you, you type in the different versions you want to, want to compare it with, and all of a sudden you have one verse in 10 different translations, and you read it, and it's fresh. 
You don't have to go to Kung Books and buy 10 different translations. You know, it's, it's at our doorstep. Fresh and, and exciting and engaging. It's all at our doorstep. We just need to find what works for us. So find something that works for you, but trust the Lord that you can seek Him, that you can seek Him. It says it is now, now is the time to seek the Lord. Not only seek Him, but to diligently seek Him and to long for His blessing. So find a way. Free up time, follow the cloud, find a fresh way, but seek the Lord. That is, that is our first step when we want the reign of the Lord. Then that scripture says we need to break up our uncultivated grounds. We need to break up our uncultivated ground. Because when the rain of God falls, it must fall on cultivated grounds. The soil must be prepared. It must be ready. So we can come to church with a soil that is not prepared. Or we can come to church covered, like I said, with our umbrella. We sit like this. We sit here every Sunday. Every Sunday, but you have this big umbrella, and it's raining, you know, but your feet isn't even wet. Nothing is wet, because we come with this big umbrella, and, and we think it's a good thing. You know, we, we, we don't even notice that we come with an umbrella, and what happens is we come to church, and we leave unchanged. Even though it was raining, even though the Spirit of God was here, but it didn't touch our hearts, and it could be for, very, for many reasons, and I'm trusting God that he would shine his spotlight on, on, on your umbrella this morning. What is keeping you from receiving God's rain? What is keeping you? What is blocking the rain of the Spirit? Because I think in all of our lives, there's something that could potentially block the rain, but it's sad. It's sad if we sit here and the rain of God is blocked. And I want to I wanna again say this morning, I feel God says prophetically, let's close our umbrellas this morning. Amen? Let's close it. Whatever it might be, ask the Holy Spirit to show you, to shine His spotlight on that one thing that's keeping the rain out. That's that, that wall around your heart. That's something that, that protects your heart, not in a good way, but in a bad way. And I want to talk about one thing this morning. I'm trusting God's going to show you what, what your umbrella is. But I want to talk about one thing this morning, and I want to call it an offense. So an offense often starts with a disappointment. And this is where we, where we kind of tolerate it sometimes for too long because a disappointment feels acceptable, an offense, we know as Christians we, we should deal with our offenses, right? But if we're disappointed, surely we, it can linger. We can nurture that disappointment a little bit because <clears throat> it doesn't feel as bad as an offense. The problem is often a disappointment starts with, oh, sorry, an a, a offense starts with a disappointment. You, you are being treated in a way that you did not expect. Or you, you receive something from somebody, you, you expected kindness, but you got a harsh word. You expected, you expected somebody to treat you in a, in a good way, but they treated you in a bad way. Or sometimes it's not even somebody does, it's something that they don't do. They forget. You expected them to remember and now they didn't remember, and it starts with a disappointment, and the next day there's another disappointment, and before you know it, the disappointment has grown into an offense, something that's really hard. Let's talk about an offense. Offense often starts with a disappointment, right? And the problem is sometimes we just look at the disappointment and we think it's innocent, or we look at, uh, we are being, we got hurt and we think it's innocent. The problem is if we don't deal with it, it becomes an offense. That makes sense? All right? You're all with me? So an offense is, a disappointment is often seen as innocent and, and we don't realize that it grows from, an offense, from a disappointment to an offense. And this is when it becomes something 
like an umbrella that blocks the reign of the Spirit, okay? So we need to be ruthless when it comes to offenses, which also means we need to be ruthless when it comes to disappointment, which can potentially grow into an offense, right? We cannot nurture it. We cannot water it. We cannot justify it. We cannot talk to 20 people and, you know, get them to say, how unfair was that? Because ultimately your disappointment is going to grow into an offense. And, you know, often the bigger the expectation, the bigger the offense. This is why in church circles, it can so easily happen that our offenses become the biggest. Because you do not expect the pastor to treat you like that. You do not expect your life group leader or your brother or sister in Christ to treat you like that because they are Christians. And that is when a disappointment is the biggest and then the potential for an offense is the biggest and a big offense create a big umbrella. And let me tell you, when, when we come to church and there is a, a, an offense, you would not be able to receive from the Lord. You're going to come here and you're going to go home unchanged, untouched. In fact, you could even get more offended because everything that will be, be taught or preached or done could even trigger that disappointment or, or offense even more. And let me tell you, there is an assignment against against churches to get them offended with their local pastor. There's an assignment. So do not be surprised. Do not be surprised when it comes. Be wide awake if there's a disappointment. And, you know, I, I really want to, from my side, on behalf of myself, on behalf of my husband, I want to ask your forgiveness. I want to I ask for your grace. If we have done things or said things or disappointed you in any way and created an umbrella over your head that keep the reign of God out, I'm going to ask you to forgive us because if you do not, it's such a clever trick from the enemy to keep you from the reign of God. You know, I want to share something that happened to me many years ago. I joined the worship team in Stellenbosch in my first year at university. I loved it. It was a massive privilege for me, but I played a lot. I played every week at our Bible school. I played many Sundays for three services, two in the morning, one in the evening. I came to, my, my whole Sunday was worship practice and church, which I loved. But it, I was dedicated to that, so it, it was really my life, it was my passion. So six years later, I was tested. When, when Shofar launched its very first uh, worship album, people started writing songs and they recorded it in Johannesburg. I couldn't be part of the recording, I had to work. But there was this communication or commitment or, you know, plan that all of us are going to be part of the launch, the live launch of this album and the songs, and we're going to sing it together as a church. But ultimately... They decided, they as the church leadership, they decided to ask professional musicians to play at the launch. Professional drummer, professional keyboard player. There were a few people in, on the worship team that were part of the launch, but uh, not all of us could play. So I was disappointed. I was seriously disappointed because it was this little baby that we birthed. As a church, as a team, that the church was relatively small at that stage. So it was kind of everybody does everything, you know, it's 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 our thing. And I was disappointed. <laughs> and the evening of the launch came and I could not worship. I could not worship. In fact, I was crying. I was crying through all the songs. And so Andre was like, What's going on with you? You know, his wife is embarrassing him. <laughs> And I actually, eventually, I walked out of the hall because I was crying so much. And I didn't know what was going on with me until I realized that my disappointment grew into an offense. I felt rejected. I felt misunderstood. I felt unappreciated. All of those nasty things. And I had to deal with my heart. I had to deal with my heart. And when I started speaking to God, he wasn't as sympathetic as I expected him to be. He just said to me, Sonica, why do you do this? Why is this so important to you? Why, why do you want to be 
on the stage or part of the launch. Why is this so important to you? Is worship not something that is between you and me? You know, and I was challenged by the Lord and it was the best thing that could have happened to me. You know, I was tested. I was seriously tested. But the result was uh, an unpolluted, cultivated land of worship. And it was so necessary for me at that stage to make a decision that this is not about me. It's not about me wanting to feel a part or feel as if I am appreciated or not. It was about unpolluted, pure worship from my heart to the Lord. And in whichever way I can contribute to the body of Christ with a gift that he has given me, in whichever way I can serve him, I, I'm going to do that. You know, and something that was really difficult for me had a, an amazing result. And it was not as if anybody came to apologize or anybody came to sit me down and say, Sonica, shame, we understand that you must feel very left out, and nothing like that. I had to deal with my heart. I had to forgive. I had to put myself in their shoes and understand why they did what they did, because I really do especially afterwards, especially now that I'm in a different position and not just a member of the worship team, I so understand why they did what they did. But at that stage, I just felt hurt and disappointed. It grew into an offense, and if I did not deal with it, I could have potentially walked away from worship altogether. I could have hardened my heart. I could have gone to church with an umbrella every Sunday, and not receive the rain, the life-giving rain of the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning. Let's close our umbrellas. Church, let's close our umbrellas. Maybe you feel like that today, unappreciated or hurt or misunderstood or rejected or not celebrated. You just don't feel celebrated or you just feel that, you know, you're not part of the inner circle or you, you're just serving and serving and serving and nobody ever says thank you. You know, I want to ask you this morning to forgive us, to give us grace, but to trust the Lord that you will remove that umbrella from your heart so that you can, you can receive God's reign every Sunday, every time you come, so that you can receive that life-giving moment. You know, in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, God says, I will give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart hearts. If, if there's any area in your life this morning that is stony and stubborn, I want to I wanna ask you to allow the Lord, to allow the reign of God to fall on your heart for Him to, to, to soften your heart, to put in a heart of flesh, to, to renew you, to refresh you, to, to give you a tender and a responsive heart. Amen. So, so we need to seek the Lord, but we also need to cultivate our land, which means we need to close our umbrellas. We need to forgive when we need to forgive. We need to give each other the benefit of the doubt. We need to give each other grace. We need to respond in obedience to the Lord and get rid of every weed and everything in our hearts, in our land, that is not going to be good when the harvest comes. We don't like want a mixture of of good and bad seeds. We don't, we, we want a land cultivated for the purposes of God. Amen. So the last part of that scripture says we need to cultivate our land. We need to seek the Lord until he comes and he reigns righteousness and salvation on us. So I just want to, want to give you a bit of a better understanding of the word salvation because it's a, it's a loaded word. It comes from the Greek word sozo. So many of you might be uh, familiar with that word, but it actually means salvation and healing and deliverance. So it's not just salvation. It's, it's there's more to it. This this gift of salvation is is it's it is it's vast. It's big. It's there's so, there's depth in it. There's so much in it. It's wholeness for our whole body, soul, and spirit. So if God says we need to seek Him. Until he reigns the gift of salvation on us. It means healing. It means deliverance. It means salvation. It means wholeness. Amen. So Andre preached last week. He said revival is now. And this, this must be our expectation that the reign of God is going to fall on us today. Amen. But remember what I said in the beginning. 
God, God reigns in every season. This is what I believe. So this autumn rain, this spring rain, this, this summer rain, this winter rain, this rain in every season, but every time it serves a different purpose in our hearts, in our lives, which means I might receive spring rain today, but you might receive autumn rain. It, every time God rains is something beautiful, but what happens, sometimes we get jealous, you know, God touched you in this way, but he didn't touch me in this way. So or we, we start investigating ourselves. Did I do something wrong? Or is there sin in my life? Or, you know, or, or as God, uh, maybe God has favorites, you know. And the only, the only difference is you're also standing in the rain, but maybe the rain of God in that moment serves a different purpose. It's planting time for you. It's not necessarily harvest time, but it is raining all the time. I mean, so we, if we need to stand in God's rain today, tomorrow, next week, next month, so be it. Just keep on standing in the rain. You know, I, I went to Shelfa Swakopmund in 2017 for an Awaken weekend. Sandra joined me. Kerry joined me. It was an amazing weekend. And I, I actually shared about a very specific story. And I want to I wanna read it to you this morning about an elephant and a dog. So the elephant and the dog became pregnant at the same time. And three months down the line, the dog gave birth to six puppies. Six months later, the dog was pregnant again, and nine months on, it gave birth to another dozen puppies. puppies. The pattern continued. On the 18th month, the dog approached the elephant, questioning, are you sure you are pregnant? We became pregnant on the same date. I've given birth three times to a dozen puppies, and they are now grown to become big dogs. Yet you are still pregnant. What is going on? So the elephant replied, you know, I can just picture the elephant, you know, patience, you know, put my patient hat on it. I can explain to the dog what is happening here. The elephant replied, there's something I want you to understand. What I'm carrying is not a puppy, but an elephant. And I only give birth to one in two years. You can Google this between 18 and 24 months, apparently. What I'm carrying is not a puppy, but an elephant. I only give birth to one in two years. When my baby hits the ground, the earth feels it. When my baby crosses the road, human beings stop and watch in admiration. What I carry draws attention. So what I'm carrying is mighty and great. Maybe what you're carrying as a purpose, as a as a spiritual purpose or an assignment or as a prophetic gifting, you are carrying an elephant. It takes time. It, it's not a puppy. Not that a puppy is bad and an elephant's good. It's just different. It is different. You know, so 2017, I went to Shafa Swakop Moon. I, I decided to, to share this story with him. Beforehand, I also decided to take a few gifts with me, and the one gift I found was two little elephant earrings, or a pair of elephant earrings, wooden earrings, and I, I knew I was going to give it to somebody specific. And after I spoke, there was this one girl came to me, name, her name is Rulene. She said to me, Sonica, we've been trusting God to fall pregnant for three years now, 2017. And I said to her, Rulene, I have a gift for you. Prophetically, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to trust with you for your little elephant to hit the earth at some stage. So last year, April, we went to Shafa Swakopmund again. She came to me. She said, Sonika, it's been almost nine years. And many of you know our journey where we trusted God for our little second elephant to, to hit the earth, which, which we walked away from. My heart is in a good space. I am, my heart is healthy. That's a story for another time. But I know what she felt like. I, I, knew, I know this journey. And I said to her, I, I don't know what to say to you because I, I know what it feels like. I relate, but I also know that we serve a God of miracles. And if you still have the conviction to trust him, if you still feel that God says, do not give up, then I'm trusting God with you. <laughs> then we're in this together. It was last year, April. January this year, she sent me a message. She said, Sonica, guess what? I'm pregnant. How awesome is that? Almost nine years. So there's a photo. 
And then this week, Tuesday, on Tuesday, the 12th of September, she sent me another photo. She said, Sonika, my little elephant has arrived. That's a little baby boy. Let's just give God praise. So I don't know what you are trusting the Lord for. But if you still have the conviction that you need to keep on standing in the rain until he, he rains down that gift of salvation on you, then I speak over you this morning faith and endurance to do this until that moment. You know, I think sometimes we, we give up prematurely. We stand in the rain, but then up to a point, and we say, okay, God, I can't do this anymore. But I just feel... For some of us this morning, God says, just hang in there. Just hang in there a little bit longer. What you're carrying is mighty and great. It's not a puppy. It's an elephant. It might be even something bigger. It's a dinosaur or something. It's something bigger than an elephant. It's something that there's destiny. There's destiny inside what you carry. It's different. Do not compare your journey with anyone else. Do not compare your journey or your faith uh, challenge with anyone else, it's different, you know, and if there's some of you that had to walk away from something because you just know that you need to let it go, then I'm also praying this morning for, for resurrection life. If there's something that has died in your life, I really pray for resurrection life, and I can testify of that, you know, I didn't receive my, the, the, the promise, or I didn't receive my miracle I was trusting for but I received so many other things. God will never leave you empty-handed. He will never leave you empty-handed. He will always rain down on you. They will, if you stand in the reign of God until he comes, there will always be a gift of salvation, always. It might look different than what you expected, but there's gonna be a gift of salvation and he will, he will deliver because his, his reign proves his faithfulness. This is beautiful scripture, Joel 2, 23, that says, Rejoice, you, O people. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the reign he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Every time he rains down on us, he demonstrates his faithfulness. And this is who he is. He cannot be unfaithful. He cannot, even when we faithless, the word says, he, will, he remains faithful. God is good. He's for you. He's fighting with you. He, he is in your boats. Just keep on standing in the rain. Keep cultivating your ground. Remove your umbrella. Let's get soaked in God's rain and trust him to, to, for, for this harvest in us to produce good fruit, to produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen? Your story is different. Let's not become envious or jealous or, you know, just another umbrella, you know, that keeps the reign of God out. Envy and competition and jealousy and, and questioning the Lord. Lord, why, why her and not me? You know, maybe you're still waiting for, for your spouse. For those of you still waiting to get married. You know, it can so easily be, Lord, God, I've been waiting for so many years and that person's been waiting for one year. It's not fair. No, life isn't fair, but you know who is fair? God. Life isn't fair. It doesn't always make sense, but God is good and God is fair. And he's got a plan with your life and it looks different from anybody else. Just hang in there. Just keep on standing in the rain. So the result, I'm going to close with this, the result of the spring rain. Why, why do I talk about this? Why, why do I encourage you to seek the Lord, to, to cultivate your land, to, to stand in the rain? Why? Do I talk about this? Because the moment we do that, we encounter life. When we encounter the Spirit of God, when we encounter the rain, we encounter life itself. You know, there's a scripture in John 6, 63. It says, it is the Spirit who gives life. You cannot find it in a textbook. You cannot find it in a career. You cannot find it in money. There's something about the Spirit of God that gives life. It breathes life into us. And we, we desperately need it. You, we desperately need it. And sometimes we don't realize that we need it, but we do. Because it's the only way to come alive. 
when we encounter life. Ephesians 2 verse 4 says, Now because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive in Christ. The only way to come alive is to encounter life. And then the result of that is we become life-giving rivers. We become life-giving fountains because the the Spirit of God reigns on us. It produces in us a, a river, a fountain, a harvest, and we release it to other people and it just continues, and it's beautiful. You know, the, the last scripture I just want to show you, Ezekiel 47, you know, another book that's really deep, if you know, these prophets, they, they are really deep, but they had something, they had this connection with the Lord, and I think sometimes we need to pay more attention to what they said and what they experienced. So, as, uh, uh, Ezekiel 47, God showed Ezekiel this vision about a, a river, and the river was all about, we first go ankle deep, then we can go knee deep, then we can go waist deep, and then we can come to a, a, a place in that river where we, we can't cross it anymore. We, we can't stand. We lose control. You know, and I, I believe this is where God wants us to be. Because the result of that, you know, when we remove our umbrellas and we're standing in the rain. We're not only standing in the rain, we get into that river, that river of life. Listen to verse 9. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river go will live. It's life-giving. Verse 12. Along the bank of the river on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month. What is the scripture saying? It says that whether we are in a winter season, spiritually, winter, summer, autumn, spring, we're going to bear fruit. Even if you feel you're in a winter season, even if you feel, you know, you're not necessarily spiritually in a season of spring, if you are standing in the rain, if you are allowing this life-giving river to flow through you, there's going to be fruit. People will experience fruit. It says that the fruit will be for food and the leaves for medicine, for healing. You will, re- you will release healing. You know, I, I've been in seasons in my life when I, I struggled, really struggled with, with insomnia or I struggled with uh, just things in my life. I did, it did not feel like a season of spring, those seasons. It felt like a serious winter season, you know, serious winter and drought, and I was struggling. And then people come to me, and they receive life. It made absolute no sense to me, because it didn't feel as if I had anything to give, because I wasn't feeling well. And then people would come to me and say, Sonica, I know, you, I know you're struggling, but what just happened is, is life. I received life. And I want to speak that over you, regardless of where you are at, financially, physically, emotionally, you can still be a river of life. It's not dependent on how you feel. It's not dependent on how, how, whether you feel on top of the world or not, whether you are 100% healthy, whether you are 100% mentally sound and fine and, and, and you know, just, we, we, we often think we must feel on top of the world to release life. It's not us to release the life. It is the Spirit of God in us. And the Spirit of God is alive and well at all times, regardless of how we feel. So I want to speak that over you guys this morning. The moment we we close our umbrellas, the moment we get soaked, the moment we say, Lord, please write down on me, we release life. We bring life. We bear fruit wherever we go. Amen? So prophetically, just once more, you don't want to come to church like this, please. You don't want to come to church, you're going to miss out, right? You're going to miss out on God's reign. Close your umbrella this morning, okay? It's time to close it. It's time to deal with whatever is keeping out God's reign, to say, this is enough. I'm going to deal with my heart. I'm going to deal with my offenses. I'm going to deal with my, with my bitterness and my anger and my questions and my cynical mindset. I'm going to deal with it because I'm not going to miss out on God's reign. Because it's raining all the time, but it's up to us how much we're going to receive. Amen?